this Zoom meeting we are holding for the induction of uh, new members in the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. We pray that all that we intend to do here today will be successful and the knowledge that will be gained here today will be impactful in our various professional um, areas and of specialization for the service of humanity and for the good of our country, Nigeria. Bless the organizers and bless those who will speak to us, inspire them and grant them more wisdom and grace to do more for this country and for humanity. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, sir, for that um, wonderful opening prayer. Once again, you are all welcome to today in, in the month of um, December. It is an induct virtual induction of new members into the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria in collaboration with African Managers. The Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria is a licensed professional body with training managers slash administrators for effective managerial slash administrative profession. This great institute is to admit the general public by experience and qualification to attain a total membership of 10,000 membership strengths, after which we can now proceed to the National Assembly to present the institute body. And in, the, in 13 years of existence of this great institute, the institute has been in terms of um, the membership drive of the institute. And excluding the numbers of those who are also who are professional conduct of the institute to become a bona fide members of the institute today, the institute now is coasting to 9,000. And the essence of this mandate is to show if the Institute can be able to stand the test of time. And in our 13 years of um, journey of professionalism, the Institute has grown from strength to strength. And in terms of as a private and public sector is overwhelming. And in the quest of the and administrators across Nigeria, Africa, and beyond, the institute collaboration with other reputable institutions of learning, such as African Institute of Strategic Managers, which is a body of managers across with our head office situated in Ghana. And as it stands today, to that um, collaboration, the Institute stand the chance of also admitting people onto both African Institute of Strategic Managers and that of Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, which for any interested candidate, either be it a member of the Institute or in who are connected here today. All this is to bridge the gap of management and administration and compare the standard of what we are doing the globe. I want to say a big congratulations to each of this journey of professionalism of the Institute without waiting. And you have to undergo all the rigorous process of becoming a certified member. The membership will no longer be by experience and qualification, but by testing um, an examination. And by then we all know the step that will be, that will be um, required 
of the Institute. The next um, into now will be the introduction of um, all the prospective. Um, as you are yet to be a member, not until after the oath of um, professional conduct of the institute, when you can now address yourself as a bona fide member of the institute. And within the next um, few hours, before we get to that bridge, of all of us who are connected here today, and I'm going to start the introduction from my humble self. I am by name Yusuf Abubakar Sadiq, Assistant Registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. And presently, in the course of um, today's induction, I'm from Kano State, Nigeria. So we are going to follow this trend of um, introduction was once I call upon the name of your device or you hear, I call on your name, all you need to do is to tell us your name, where you are connecting from. Thank you. The first person I have here is Mr. Ayo Ogunleye. If you can hear me, Mr. Ayo Ogunleye, please kindly on name where you work and where you are connecting from. Thank you. Yes, my name is uh, Ayo Ogunleye. I'm a native of Ekiti State. I have connected to this uh, online induction from Addo Ekiti, the Ekiti State capital in the Ekiti State. I'm a lecturer at the Federal Polytechnic Ekewe Bayesa State. Thank you very much. But the next person I have here is Kemi Olaya. Mrs. Kemi Olaya, please um, once again introduce yourself to the house. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good morning. My name is Olaya Uluwa Kemi Kudrat, and I'm connecting from Yaba, Lagos. I work with Pavilion Technology. I'm the head of sales uh, and marketing for Pavilion Technologies, and I have. Um, 27 years of working experience. Pleased to be with you all. You are welcome on board, Ma. It's good to have you connected with us today. The next person I have here is Chief Obioma Aslam Chukuka. If you can hear me, sir. Chief Obioma Aslam Chukuka, please kindly unmute your microphone. Tell us your name, where you work, and where you are connecting from. Thank you, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, actually, Chief Dr. Obiama Anselm Chukuka. A fellow of the Chartered Institute of Strategic Managers and Leaders. A fellow, sorry. A fellow of the Corporate Institute of Strategic Research. I am speaking from Lagos, Nigeria, and uh, I am uh, the founder and CEO of Blue Fox Media Works Limited, an IT firm based in Lagos, Nigeria. Actually, I'm at Airport Road. I'm, I'm dressed up already for, for the contract people's uh, doctoral fellowship today. So I'll be heading out. I thank you and I wish you well. Thank you, sir. Chief Dr. Obioma. And it's good um, having an intellect like you connected with us today in the course of um, today's. Thank you, sir. The next person I have here on my screen here is Wahab. Mr. Wahab, please, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone and tell us, introduce yourself to the house. Thank you. Good, mor good morning, everybody. Good my morning. name is Wahab. I'm a staff of a transmission company of Nigeria TCN. I'm connecting from FCT Abuja. You are welcome, sir. Thank it's good so to much. have you connected with us. We have Dele Olawoye. Dele Olawoye, please, if you can hear me, I'll move to your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Thank you. All right. Good morning to us all. Good morning, sir. I am Emmanuel Oladili Olawoi. 
connecting from of Kwara State. I am the MD CEO of Ibolo Microfinance Bank in the state. Thank you. You are welcome, Stan. It's good to have you on board. Yeah. The next person, um, Owolabi, Owolabi, Mr. and Mrs., please. Unmute your microphone and um, introduce yourself to the house. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Yeah. My name is Owola B. Um, I work with Guinness Nigeria PLC, distributorship to all supermarkets within Lagos. And I'm connecting right from Lagos. Yes. It's um, it, it a family of accountants, both Mr. and Mrs. Okay. And, certified, and we have all other institutions that we gathered. I'm also a CEO of my other different businesses. A speaker, yeah, well, a so many an entrepreneur and a career person. Thank you. Are you, welcome. you are welcome on board, sir. And it's good to have you connected here with us today. Thank you, sir. The next person, um, Sotie, Sotie, please, if you can hear me, kindly unmute your microphone and introduce yourself to the house. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sotie Akiola. I am the administrative manager of Radio France International House Service. I'm connecting from Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. And it's good to have you on board. Thank you. The next person is, um, the screen I have here is um, showing Yix Incorporated. Yix, please, if you can hear me, kindly unmute to the house. Thank you. Good morning, my distinguished gentlemen and ladies. Uh, my name is Yakub Oshifui. I'm the CEO of Yix Incorporation. I'm into construction, infrastructure. I'm a project manager by profession. I'm a CEO of the company. Thank you very much. You are welcome on board, and it's good to have you connected with us today. The next person I have here is Moto G. Moto, I'll move your microphone and tell us your name and where you are connecting from. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Valentine Anario Hai. I'm a clergyman. And I'm um, joining you from Edo State. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome, sir. And it's good to have you connected with us today. We have um, Infinite Hot 10i. Infinite Hot 10i, if you can hear me, kindly unmute your microphone and tell us your name, where you are. Okay, Infinite Note 10. Infinite Note 10. Techno Pop 4, if you can hear me. Techno Pop 4. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is, my name is Victor Danjuma Serki. I work as a process engineer at Dangote Fertilizer Limited. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. We have Technopop Sys Go. If you can hear me, Technopop Sys Go. Microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. There's another Technopop 4. Can hear me. Also, we have Samsung SM A two three five F. If you can hear me, and tell us where you are connecting from.
Tech no pop for raising hand. Your mic only unmuted. Your microphone is muted. Tech no pop for raising hand. Your microphone is muted. Good morning. The network is breaking, but now we're standing. Well, um, you and um, we also have in our midst today the Honorable Registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, who is also going to double serve as um, the resource person in which we are going to tap in the course of um, today's um, induction on the paper title dynamic environment in persons of Dr. Abdullahi Jibri Salu, who is the Registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria and also serving African Institute of Strategic Managers. Mr. Registrar, sir, if you are there, please say hello to the house. Good morning, everyone. You're all welcome on board. Thank you. Good morning, sir, and it's good to see you today. The Honorable Registrar is connecting with us from Lokoja, the capital of um, Kogi State. It is um, good people from all walks of life, from different fields who are connected here with us today, ranges from the to the industrialists, entrepreneurs, CEO, and MDs. This is one of the beauty of um, the Institute of Professional, irrespective of um, the irrespective of your line of duty, irrespective of you believe that here in Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, every managerial slash administrative skills, because in whatever we are doing in life we have somebody who are working under us. We have those who are subordinate for us to run an effective organization and run a successful and um, a, a, a kind of a man there is need for you as a manager, as a leader of your team, as the CEO of your organization to have administrative skills which will enable you to navigate your organization to success. The next thing we are going to address of the Honorable Registrar of the Institute, Dr. Abdullahi Jibri Salu, before we now proceed to the main agenda. Registrar, sir. Okay, Mr. Abakar, you can take it. All right. Let me let me share it on screen. Being an, all right, thank you, sir. Being an advocate of um, delegation, he before even um, he start talking about it, he's a man that always believe in delegating responsibility, and uh, he delegates to those who have the requirement of carrying out such um, responsibility. Looking around him, we always have the zeal and have that courage in order to grow in every ramification because um, kind of create environment for everyone to succeed. And in the course of today's um, induction, since he's going to have a bigger task, he has delegated the ordinarily supposed to be taken by him to me to carry out that um, responsibility while he awaits to take um, the bigger tax in the course of today's um, program. Opening address of the Honorable Registrar on the occasion of this um, virtual inaugural induction exercise. members who are connected with us, 
ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed highly honored and privileged to welcome you to this memorable virtual induction exercise for fellows and members, managers and administrators of Nigeria, Com African Institute of Strategic Managers. This institute is registered under the company's 59 laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1990. I am therefore highly grateful and eminent personages whose contributions and general understanding and conduct assisted compatibly our ability and general administration of our endeavor. It is in conjunction, therefore, with our modest approach of recognizing an individual or group of individuals whose endless illusion or center ego on the job performance and specification that today's activities is born. Creditably, administrators are in enviable cadres and canopies all over the world. It's therefore suffice to add certain here in that this much Nigerian apparatus are geometrically based on talent for experiences generated from convocation of this nature. That is not left behind by our leadership is the cognizance ability, ability to honor outward praises in their life and not accolades after their demise. It is therefore a center stage of this institute that a certified managers need training and retraining rest with fundamental experimental dynamos of administrative realities of the time. This in other words, hasten to elevate the standard of one's ability in just a position with work value anywhere in the world. It is therefore our honor to inform you that the prestigious direct professional membership of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, whom African Institute of Strategic Managers will be given to deserving men and women whose social economy, ladies and gentlemen, we are here as we are here as cluster, which according to Porter 1998, are geographically proximate group of interconnected institution in a particular field linked by commonality and complementarity. The synergy driven from this network is what confers competitive advantage to cluster models of industrialization, which is bred from basic understanding as this. What we will gather today will be of immense use in actualizing our goals in our various efforts. Having membership of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, Com African Institute of Strategic Managers is a highly colored decoration as we are having synergy with reputable international. Members are therefore prone to professional trainings through meetings, seminars, conferences, and related courses at minimal contribution within and outside. Nigeria. Members are also prone to improve and develop the science and maintaining investigations and research into the application of such entities. Members are equally given the secret of success in business and this study and practice of its ethical principle with a mandate to raise professional practice to its IS. Certificate given under the approval of the council. We are here to that way will our mission statement be actualized. I therefore wish that we pay attention, for we believe that Nigeria can be facelifted in general administration within us who are connected here today, even as our Nigerian brother. By congratulating each and every one of you in advance, distinguished members of this house, I That is the registrar, Dr. Abdullah Hijibri Salio, who 
of today's theme of the induction on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. The next thing we are going to look at induction, um, the most vital parts of um, today's um, gathering on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment that is hostile and cluster as a manager as you expected to do. Mind you, the kind of being in today is classified in four ac letter acronyms, which is VUCA, V-U-C-A, VUCA. VUCA means volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. You all agree with me that the kind of business is full of volatility, uh, uh, is full of volatility, full of uncertainty, full of complexity, and full of ambiguity. 2019 um, pandemic, which is still um, ravaging till this moment, is one of the perfect example dynamic environment in which we are operating in today. During this period, most of the world couldn't even predict what the next moment will have. And I believe even as a result of that um, global pandemic that makes many of us see the possibility of this platform in which we are carrying out the day. And during that time, one of the session that really suffered from the world was our um, education sector. Because at that time, from primary down to even our tertiary um, institution, we're all on lockdown while in other developed country, this platform. But as God will have it, we also try to key into it until today it has come to that manager operating in XYZ company. And you are faced with all these kind of challenges. And another part is today, we are seeing today is the ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia. What would you have, what organization to navigate through? Yes, you might not have the power over the storm, but build a ship that will help your organization to navigate through the storm. I will not want to start a lecture even before the lecture itself commences. I to hand over back to the Honorable Registrar, Dr. Abdullahi Jibri Saliu, who is going to take us on the journey of 45 minutes to one hour team of induction, the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. Mr. Registrar, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hopefully it is audible. Thank you. You are all welcome on board. This is the August induction, August gathering of the Institute in the month of December the last induction for the year. We thank God for the journey so far. IPMA is now 13th uh, we've done the, we've celebrated our 13th year already. I can remember when the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria started in year 2009, and I was registered as number 001. I told myself then, 
that when God created man, man was alone. And today, we have eight, over 8 billion people across the globe. In the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, we are over 8,500 membership across the country. And then we are waiting for the next dispensation of a National Assembly for us to send our bill to the National Assembly. We want to start with the, the next uh, assembly to get our institute become a chartered body. After which membership shall no longer be by experience and qualifications or by examinations. You are all welcome on board. The theme of today's induction is titled the role of professional managers in a dynamic environment. What will a manager do in an environment that is always hostile and clustered? Should we adjust, adapt, or quit the environment? As professional managers, we are expected to have little knowledge of everything. We are the last to be fired in any organization. At times, we die with the organization. It is also good for us to think outside the bus, and if possible, we should shatter that bus. So I believe. Uh, you have a, a pen with you. Let us uh, crack our brain a little bit. We think outside the box before coming back to the theme of today's uh, induction. Okay, you can jot down the followings. There are six eggs in a basket. <coughs> Excuse me. There are six eggs in a basket. You have six eggs in a basket. Six people are to take each egg. You have six eggs in the basket, and six persons are to take each egg. Yet we have an egg remaining in the basket. We have six eggs in the basket for six people, which they took each an egg, but we still have an egg remaining in the basket. Somebody should unmute and tell me why we are still having that egg in the basket. We have six eggs and six persons on ground to take each. But after taking each egg, we have an egg remaining in the basket. What happened there? Hello? Why do we still have an egg remaining in the basket? I'm waiting. Um, hello. Yes. Madam Olaya. Okay. Um, this on. is Kemi Olaya. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. Just my thinking. Probably uh, um, they have mistakenly put seven eggs in the basket. No, the, the question did not state seven, ma'am. The question did not state seven. We have six and it is confirmed okay. for six persons. But after taking okay. each egg, we have an egg remaining in the basket. So one person is up, was absent, so I didn't take. No, 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 no one is absent. They are all on ground. Ah. If I may, if I may say something. Yes, sir. Uh, Perhaps two people, two people shared one. <laughs> no, sir. We have an egg remaining oh, in the one basket. Person, yeah. <laughs> Why do we still have an egg? The question did not state two people to share one. Or oh, somebody uh, is, uh, was uh, absent. But they were all on ground. They took each egg. And yet we have an egg. Why is still that egg in the basket? Why do we still have that egg in the basket? After they have shared all. Hello. Maybe the person that brought the egg did not take his own. No, the, he took his own. But we still have an egg remaining in the basket. Why is the egg still in the basket? There's something that is not adding up, sir. You can do better than that, Mr. Olawi. 
We still have an egg remaining in the basket. Why? You can add one or two things to get it right. Okay, let me give an expo. Mr. Adele, what if you are the one sharing the egg and you now notice that the basket is so fanciful? What do you think you can do? I will carry the egg with the basket. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can see now. <laughs> you have taken so, it already. The world. That means one of the person decides to take the egg with the basket. Be the basket. Uh -huh. Would you allow the basket to be wasted? <laughs> no, 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 no. So you can see somebody, someone decides to carry the egg, his own egg with the basket. That is why we still have that egg remaining in, eh, in the basket. Just like our topic for the national conference, the one uh, held uh, uh, on tent, on effective communication. It's just like uh, if, you are, if you ask somebody, maybe your maid in the house, boil yam. And later you now come and say, okay, the yam should be, uh, we are going to pound it. And the maid has already put salted the yam before boiling it. Have you communicated effectively? <laughs> no. That is why effective, uh, you have to communicate effectively. We still have that the basket, the egg in the basket, simply because the basket is so good and uh, somebody decides to take his egg with the basket. Okay. I've got my key with you. Sir? This will lead to another question again. Please, you can take down. You are driving down the road. You are driving down the road on a wild stormy night. Wild, W-I-L-D. You are driving down the road on a wild stormy night. You are driving down the road on a wild stormy night. You meet three people at the bus stop, waiting for the bus. You meet three people at the bus stop, waiting for the bus. Taking the first person is an old lady who looks as if she's about to die. An old lady who looks as if she's about to die. The second person is an old friend who once saved your life. The friend that once saved your life. Then the third person is a future partner you have been dreaming about. The third is a future partner you have been dreaming about. You are driving down the road on a white stormy night you met three people at the bus stop waiting for the bus. One of them is an old lady who looks as if she's about to die. The second person is an old friend who has saved your life. And the third is a future partner you have been dreaming about. Note, your car is to carry one person. You are to carry one person. Whom will you choose? Whom will you choose? Your car is to carry one person. Whom will you choose? This is a case study. So you have you are faced with three challenges now as a professional manager. Good morning, what everyone. are you going to do? I know we have medical doctors in the house that are trained to save life. And uh, somebody, but you know, you have a friend that won't save your life. Then you equally have uh, the future partner. You have been dreaming about opportunity loss cannot be regained. So what can you do in the such situation? How do you balance these competing goals as a professional manager? Should you drop uh, the product or the market segment? Or you, you decide otherwise? What are you going to do? Yes, hello. Well, for me, hello. Sorry. Yeah, for me, I think all the answers I think all the answers are relatively right. Yeah. But personally, I would 
save an old friend who once saved my life. You stay with your friend. The old lady looks as if she's about yeah, to die. Yeah, who wants to save my life? If you have a product that is at Thank you very order, much, sir. Okay. You have attempted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name ah. is Nayo. Yeah, Mr. Ayo. My name is Ayo Gulaya. Okay, Mr. Ayo, go on. Yes, I will, from this uh, 3D scenario painted, yeah. I will go for the lady that uh, looks like uh, she's going to die. Are you a medical My doctor, friend, sir? As well, no, I, I'm, I'm a lecturer. <laughs> okay, sir. I'm an academic person. <laughs> okay, sir. Yes, it is better to save life. Yeah. My friend has once saved my life. He's not in dear need at this moment. He's a very my strong future one. Partner, <laughs> yes, my future partner. If this one do, don't come, another beautiful one will come later well, in life. Well, you, have, you have been dreaming about her already. And you met her at the bus stop. And yes, another, another dream will come. Let us save this <laughs> life. He's about to die. You, you dream another <laughs> dream. <laughs> yes, it is better to save life because once there is life, once there is no life, there is no more hope. Once okay. I save it, then I've done what God has uh, wants me to do. It is good you have attempted it because in a professional exam, for okay. not attempting, you will be penalized. So it is better. All right. you okay. Attempt hello, so, hello, sir. Okay. Okay. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Uh, from me. Kemi here. Uh, my name okay. is Big. Hello, sir. Um, okay, Mr. Fantastic. Lawe, you have Hello, talk. sir. Okay. Hello. Uh, well, for me, I, th I, th I think to, since the lady is my dream and uh, mm -hmm. I have a car, I can only pick one. Yeah. And we need to save a life in that kind of a situation. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. If this other friend can drive, I huh? think I can, I can stay with my uh, dream really? and still achieve the purpose of saving that life by begging this other guy mm -hmm. to. Hello, you can complete it, Mr. Olawe. Yes, what is trying to complete, Mr. Olawe also, this will be. Mr. Okay. Olawe is already speaking the mind that, yes, the guy should be able to drive. Take yeah. the old woman while you stay with your future partner. You've been able to use one stone to kill three birds. God bless Nigeria. God bless Hello. Icon. Hello. My name okay. is Good Luck from Good Luck. Okay. My name is Good Luck from Other States. Okay. Yes, these scenarios that you painted yes, are very intriguing. Yes, and as as a manager, yes, you say that we have to choose one out of the three. Yeah, but uh, you have you have competing goals already. It is good if you in the organization. How do you balance uh, these competing goals? Yes, I know. And you that find it white. That's yeah. a good thing. I'm yeah. afraid to come from God. Yeah. So I will go for my partner because I believe that she's my wife and God has been to, to be so. That's my contribution. Ah, that means the old lady should go and die. And the other product, uh, that is uh, your yes. friend that won't save your life. But this is a case study. You can add an assumption. Ten answers may not uh, may be right, but not the same. So you have attempted. At least uh, you have solved one no. out of the three. Okay, can you lie? Yeah. Yes, ma. Can you lie? Yeah. No, yeah yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, um, well, the same goes. One good turn deserve another. Yeah. For somebody who has once saved my life and made me to be at that very to be alive to be at that very place at that time, okay. I think I should save uh, assist that person too. Now, for the future person. I mean, the person can always wait. It's just a future partner. It's not. Uh, you have been it dreaming. Has, it's an opportunity I mean, for. It's an opportunity for you to strike. <laughs> I mean, if you were again. not alive, you wouldn't. If that guy, if that person didn't save me, I don't think I would even dream any dream. Maybe okay. you know. So yeah, I will always save that person. For the old, uh, feeble woman, well. She has little or nothing to contribute to life. Ah, that she, is an old product. You need yeah. to revive. You need to revive <laughs> product life cycle, madam. <laughs> Maturity, then you keep on uh, uh, exploring. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. you may not need Hello. to Hello, my spend uh, much. Somebody has uh, already day. answered already, Mr. Olabi and uh, the other Mr. Ayo. At least uh, I go with them. 
he has assumed, because this is a case study, you have to bring in something, that is why as professional managers, it is good for us to think outside the bus, and if possible, shut out that bus. He believed that his friend can drive. Since the friend can drive, he can give the car to his friend. Let the friend take the old lady to our destination, let her not die. Then uh, the future, he can wait uh, behind with the future, future partner. Mm -hmm. You know how surges can be. Even if he should be there till tomorrow, he may not uh, get tired. So he can continue while waiting for the next available bus. You can see that with this, uh, he has, uh, he has, mm -hmm. he has, uh, he has touched uh, the three challenges uh, uh, that he's uh, facing. So the old lady must not die. Your future partner should not run away. Opportunity loss cannot be regained. And uh, the friend mm. that once saved you, at least there's an opportunity for you to pay back. Like uh, you have three products in your organization. Maybe one is not contributing to the global contribution. Then uh, at least uh, you can uh, still do something to revive it and so many other things. So let us come back to the theme of uh, today's induction, which is on the role of uh, professional managers in a dynamic environment. As a professional manager, we must have the little knowledge of everything. If I proceed, I would like to know who the first management consultant on earth was. Who can tell me who the first management consultant on earth was? It is here in the Bible. We have pastors in the house. Let them help us. The man uh, met uh, somebody and told him to choose among men leaders. Teach them laws and ordinances. Let them be adjudicating over lesser matter. Why you be there to give approvals? That has taken care of all the modern and traditional functions of management, post -cop, planning, budgeting, staffing, directing, leading, and uh, what have you. Who was that man? Hello. Hi. Okay. I think I I uh, I I say that it's Moses. No, not Moses, sir. But you are very close. The person was related to Moses. Okay, I think it's Joshua. No. Okay. Uh, Aaron. In the garden of Eden, Adam was uh, managing everything in the garden. Not Adam. Then uh, we need another prayer. Madam Kemi, we are waiting. Hello. Aaron. Aaron, no. Aaron is a brother Aaron. of Moses, not okay. uh, the one that advised Moses. So, I have given that myself out already. <laughs> not the one that uh, gave the advice, because that particular person was operating as a one man manager. You said it again. Said it again. Is it Jethro? Yes, Jethro. Jethro. Don't guess. It is yet the, the the man is Jethro, the father in law of Moses. He came and met Moses operating oh, as Moses. a one man manager. 365 days, no leave, no transfer. He was just working alone. We still have some people up to now operating like Moses, operating like a one man manager. 365 days, no leave, no transfer. You see them running helter skelter. When they are going home, they go home with the, the office. Moses was operating that way when the father in law jet room visited. He saw the style uh, Moses was using, and as an, uh, as an elderly man with uh, experience, he called him son-in-law. If you continue this way, you wear out easily. You get home and become useless to my daughter. Why not choose among men leaders? Teach them laws and ordinances. Let them be adjudicating over lesser matter. Why you, Moses, will be there to give approvals? That advice by Jethro turns out to be the first advice given by the first management consultant on earth. You can see the modern and the traditional functions of management has been taken care of. As professional managers, we are like the hub that rolls the wheel. You know the hub and the wheel. The hub is stagnant, but the wheel keeps on rolling. Like the bicycle uh, hub and uh, others uh, distant with the machine. We are like the hub that rolls the wheel. Without us, all other managerial functions are useless. We are the last to be fired in any organization, and at times we die with the organization. That is why we must manage resources. 
and uh, resources are scarce. Now we are in, uh, I don't know what we are in now in Nigeria, but uh, it is not recession. <laughs> we are struggling. So you can see that uh, resources are, are scarce now. And as a professional manager, you have to manage uh, those resources uh, optimally. That is why you must uh, manage the aims, aims, the resources, the men, machines, money, materials, methods, and the market. Let me take four of the aims. The men, as a professional manager, you must uh, peg uh, the right uh, pegs in the right holes. A square pegs, square pegs in square holes, and round pegs in round holes. Get the right people to do things rightly. Not uh, bringing people together as a result of what I termed uh, as grandfather father son relationship. Meritocracy has to be your watchword. Get the right people to do things rightly. You must understand the behaviors, the conduct of the people you are working with. Those you can delegate functions to without coming back to do the job yourself. Meritocracy has to be your watchword. Money cannot go to materials to purchase. Materials cannot go to machine to produce without man, and that man is the administrator. Then the second M I would like us to look into is our machines, machines, the tools we use. It has to be in line with modern specifications, modern applications. When the 21st century, where things are done digitally, and you are still running machines of uh, 18th century, that you are operating the, like uh, the time of Abascos. You are operating like, uh, uh, like the time of Moses. What do you think will become of your organization by now? There are competitors who are not ready to go to bed until you are already sleeping. That is why if you must go to bed, you go with one eye closed. You must always sniff around, understand what is happening around you. Your machines have to be in line with modern applications. We have moved away from analog to digital now. I could remember when this institute started in 2009, most of what we do then was a sharing of handbills to advertise our, the institute. We move from one location to another. Imagine sending somebody from here to Sokoto to go and spend about five days in hotel to create awareness. But now if you are still doing that, you'll be left behind. Now it is uh, there's something that uh, has come up already. In the next few years, many more people are going to lose their jobs due to uh, uh, AL, artificial intelligence and automations. We have robots that will be manning our factories, working 24 hours nonstop. And the automations, two things that you ought to have done, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe that will take you a week or so. You do it with a click of a button. It is happening now. If you don't move fast, then you, you get stuck. That is why you must plan where you are presently and where you are hoping to be. Everything is now done uh, in a digital format. The, measure, the adverts now, you click it on the social media, you click it on the uh, Google uh, paper click, you fix it on so many other things. People can get it if you want them to see it across the, all over the world. It will go viral within seconds. But in those days, you have to move from here to there. You network with people, you call this and that, but now it is just a click of a button to tell you that the whole world is a global village now. Your machines have to be in line with modern applications. Always do what you call benchmarking. Things that will give you comparative advantage over your competitors. Your competitors are not going to bed until you are already sleeping. That is why you must always do what we call benchmarking. Things that will give you comparative advantage. Just like when uh, the GSM uh, operator started in 2001, Echo Wireless and uh, MTN, 
They made us believe that per second billing was not feasible. But immediately Glow came on board, they saw that the market was already taken. Then they decided to benchmark, to do things that will give them comparative advantage. And uh, they started with their per second billings. But what do we have today? If not before the coming of Glow, an ordinary hello and its cost was equivalent to 50, 55 Naira. I could remember using stopwatch then. Anytime if I'm talking and it gets to 50 seconds, 7, 58, 59, if I don't cut again, it gets to 61, uh, uh, 61 then it, I should continue talking till another round so that uh, I don't get cheated. But today, how many of us still uh, know, understand how, uh, how much uh, is our call per minute? We don't follow that up again. We are no longer using the stopwatch again. Glow made it possible. Just like in 1986, when 7UP launched uh, the 12th the URESA, the difference is clear. Many people wanted to win the URESA. It was the best auto then. And uh, they uh, started uh, piling counters at the detriment of Coca-Cola products. It was then uh, the Coca-Cola company launched an enlightenment campaign using NAFDAQ on the danger of sugar. That by the year 2010, over 10 million Nigerians will be having diabetes. And you know the sugar content in 7-Up. The rest is now history. In 1995, when Percy and Mirinda came up with uh, the 50 CL bottle, those of us in Lagos then called that a robot. It was sold for 35 Naira, the same price of uh, 35 CL, uh, 35 CL Coca-Cola products. When they saw that their market share was going down, they went back to their drawing board and came up with uh, the 10 CL, uh, to, uh, the 20, 25 CL bottle, which we called Solo. And it was sold for, 15, uh, for, for 10 Naira. The rubber was sold for 15 Naira, why the solo was sold for 10 naira. That was how they regained their market share. Your machines have to be in line with modern specifications. The third M I also want us to look into is that of uh, money, money. Money answered all things according to the Bible. It is also there in the Quran that money and children are the beauty of this world. That is why as a professional manager, you must understand the flow of fund in and out of your enterprise. The cash flow system, how the cash is generated and utilized. That is why the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 1990 stated that all information that will assist users of financial statement in assessing the viability, liquidity, and profitability of a company must be stated in a clear, logical, and understanding manner. For users of accounting information, we have the stakeholders. The employees are interested on their salaries, wages, and other personal costs. Providers of capital are also there for interest and dividends. Government is a stakeholder in what we do for tax. The business itself as a stakeholder for maintenance and expansion. That is why you must understand the cash flows from uh, operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, and cash flows from uh, financing activity. The life wire of every organization is finance. It's also there in the Quran that money and children are the beauty of this world. Then the last M I would like us to look into which you have to manage uh, judiciously as a professional manager is materials, materials. And the materials can be seen in three ways. We have the reorder level, the minimum level, and the maximum level. The reorder level is the level you must always initiate action for fresh supply. The level you must always initiate action for fresh supply is called the reorder level. If your capacity, maybe your monthly capacity or the units of uh, your production is 10,000 units, and you, have a, uh, you, you stock it from the beginning of the month, 
By the time we get to 5,000, that is a break even point, the margin of safety. So you, you must initiate action for fresh supply. Don't wait until it get, get below. Remember the COVID-19 came on and uh, we were not uh, uh, prepared for it. What happened? Every nook and cranny of the world was in, to was in total lockdown. If you are the type that you get your raw materials from, uh, from China, I could remember I bought something from China that period. It took six months to get to Nigeria. Something that ordinarily should have taken uh, between 45 days to 50 days to get here. But six months. If you are operating at a minimum level and uh, you have COVID-19 on board, what do you think would have become of your company? Every nook and cranny was in total lockdown. That is why we believe that the other level is the level you must always initiate action for fresh supply. Always get uh, your stocks on time. Then the maximum level is the level you should not allow stock to rise above. When you are operating at a maximum level, you are tying down the cost of your cost of capital. Increase in the warehousing, it could lead to privileges, breakages, and what have you. Then the minimum level is also the level you should not allow your stock to fall below. Imagine when you are operating at minimum level and COVID-19 struck, or you are still operating at minimum level. We don't know the, what, we, what, what, is, what, what is in the pipe right now. Maybe another thing came on board by January, God forbid. What do you think will become of your company when every nook and cranny of the world will be in lockdown? Even education was in total lockdown. Every nook and cranny were looking for how to survive. Those companies you depend on will be closed. When you operate at a minimum level, there are so many disadvantages. Loss of goodwill. Your customers will go to your competitors and not all of them will return back to you. Loss of customers. I do production. It can even lead to the closure of your organization. And you get to that stage where you can no longer pay for services rendered or loan obtained. An official receiver will be appointed for your organization of which there will be a public examination to tell the world why you are in that state of insolvency. Is it as a result of your recklessness or carelessness in your management of affairs? Or as a result of forces beyond your control? Under the worst scenario, you become a bankrupt. You can know, you know that there are, there are so many disabilities when one becomes a bankrupt. You cannot even preside there, uh, you know. <laughs> you cannot even uh, contest as a counselor of your ward. I wanted to say you cannot preside uh, as the head of the family. <laughs> well, it is true. Because uh, it is uh, he who pays the piper that dictates the tool. Even in our family settings, they will avoid you. Because it is when you are flourishing, Everybody want to say this is our brother. Failure, failure is an offer. They will, if they are the, you see that uh, it will only remain you and your family. Many people will run away from you. You cannot be a counselor. You cannot be a chairman of your local government. You cannot even become a, they will not allow you to act as a director of any company until you are finally discharged as a bankrupt. So you can see that minimum stock level is the level you should not allow your stock to fall below. There are so many disadvantages, like loss of goodwill, loss of customers, idle production, and it can even lead to the closure of your organization. Let us come back to the theme of uh, to this uh, induction. I've been talking uh, outside uh, the paper. Let us come back home 
to understand the better. The roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. What is management? Because by our introduction, I can see that many of us are not from management background. But uh, management is what we do day in, day out. Even as a full-time housewife, if you don't manage your resources at your disposal, you run into problems. As a medical director in an hospital, your job is not uh, that of uh, a surgeon or a specialist any longer or consultant. You are that of, uh, you are operating as a, a manager or administrator. You have uh, people under you and uh, they must, you must uh, carry them along. You must make things happen. The superordinate goals of the organization must be achieved. So therefore, what is now management? Management is a universal phenomenon. It is a very popular and widely used term. All organizations, business, political, cultural or social are involved in management because it is the management which helps and directs the various efforts towards a definite purpose. According to Harold Coons, management is an art of getting things done through and with uh, the people in formally organized groups. When you get things done through people in a formally organized group, management has taken place. But to my own uh, defin layman's uh, definition, management is when two or more people come together to roll a stone and it is effectively, effectively rolled. It is an art of creating an environment in which people can perform and individuals can cooperate towards attainment of group, uh, group goals. When the environment is conducive, if uh, there is a noisy background now, I don't think we'll achieve our aim of uh, coming on Zoom. Thank God for the suggestion by one of our participants. I wish you, if you are not the one talking, you should mute. Except when you want to say something, you ship in one or two things. Because it's an adult session, and I, I, I like it to be, I always want it to be an interactive one. We are here to learn from one another. But the environment must be conducive. If the environment is not conducive, management cannot take place in a rancor or rowdy environment. And people should be ready to cooperate towards uh, the attainment of a uh, the superordinate goals. According to F. Uh, Taylor, management is an art of knowing what to do, when to do, and see that it is done in the best and cheapest way. When you know what to do, when to do, then planning has taken place. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail, fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. So you must know what you are here to do how to get a go about it, see that the resources are in parity with the agenda on ground. There should be what we call value analysis and value engineering, how to improve the quality without uh, necessarily, uh, how, how to reduce the price without uh, affecting the quality. So F. Taylor is telling us to plan what to do, how to do, and see that it is done in the best and cheapest way. Therefore, we can say that uh, good management includes both being effective and efficient. Being effective means doing the appropriate task, fitting the square pegs in square holes and round pegs in round holes. Being efficient means doing the task correctly, at least possible cost with the minimum wastage of resources. Then move on to levels of management. The term levels of management refers to a line of demarcation between various managerial positions in an organization. The number of levels in management increases when the size of the business and workforce increases and vice versa. The level of management determines a chain of command, the amount of authority and status enjoyed by any managerial position. The level of management can be classified in three broad categories. We have the top level, that is the administrative level of management, that is why you get those at the, the, the upper echelons of the organization. We call that the strategic level. Then we have the middle level, that is the executors, the executory, executors of the policies has been promulgated by the, the upper echelons. 
We call them the, uh, the, 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 the line managers. They are called the tactical managers. The low level, that is where you get the supervisory, operative, first line managers, the superintendent, sectional heads, and uh, the supervisors. They, they are called uh, the operative uh, managers. Managers at all these levels perform different functions. The role of managers at all the three levels is discussed below. You can see the diagram. We have the top, we have the middle, and the low management. Top level of management consists of board of directors, the chief executives, or managing directors. The top management is the ultimate source of authority, and it manages goals and policies for an enterprise. It devotes more time on planning and coordinating functions. The role of the top management can be summarized as follows. Top management lays down the objective and broad policies of the enterprise. They are the conceptual thinkers. They must uh, plan what is to be done, the objectives and pro broad policies of the enterprise. Issues necessary instructions for preparation of departmental projects Procedures, schedules. There must be budget to ensure that uh, the uh, resources is in parity with the agenda agenda at hand. The superordinate goals of the organization has to be achieved. Prepare strategic plan and policies for the enterprise. The vision and the, the mission and the vision statement has to be taken note of. Where we are presently and where we are hoping to be, the long-term plan of the organization. Appoint uh, executives for middle level, that is the departmental managers, where you have the manager account, HR manager, the purchasing manager, um, uh, and all other man line managers. Controls and coordinate the activities of all the departments. The, administrat the administrative managers controls and uh, coordinate the activities of all departments. That is why I told you earlier, as a professional manager, you must have the little knowledge of everything. You must understand what is happening. It is also responsible for maintaining the contact with the outside world. Provide guidance and direction. The top management is also responsible towards the shareholders for the performance of the enterprise. At the end of the year, you call for AGM and you tell the, your this thing, your shareholders what you are giving them for every share invested in your company to whom much is uh, expected what is given, but never do what you call window dressing of oats. Don't uh, behave like the Enron of America, the power generating company that has, was in the state of insolvency for years, but kept on uh, doing what you call window dressing of oats, preparing two types of a sheet, one for the members of the public and the other for the directors, bamboozled uh, people into investing much uh, into their company, not until a smaller company comes up to acquire Enron, that people knew that uh, the company was uh, actually sick. The middle level of management consists of the branch managers, departmental managers. They are responsible to the top management for the functioning of their department. They devote more time to organizational and directional functions. In small organizations, there's only one layer of middle level of management. But in big enterprises, there may be senior and junior middle level management. Their role can be emphasized as they execute the plans of the organization in accordance with the policies and directives of the top management. That is why we call them the executors, because they are there to execute uh, the plans of those at uh, the upper echelons, the board of directors. They make plans for the subunits of uh, the organizations. Every manager is entitled to make a plan for his uh, uh, unit, for his uh, department. They participate in employment and training of lower level management. You must train uh, the people under you, let them uh, recruit them, and also tell them what is expected of them. They interpret and explain policies from top level management to the lower level. They are responsible for coordinating the activities within the division or department. Also send uh, important report and other important data to top level management. They evaluate performance of junior managers. That is performance appraiser. They are also responsible for inspiring lower level managers 
towards better performance. You must inspire them as a, a good uh, as a leader. You must be a good uh, a, a good leader. Must be a good listener. Always listen to those uh, uh, your subordinates and see how you can meet up. Uh, they can meet up with their, their their individual goals so that the superordinate goals of the organization can be achieved. Inspire them to great uh, the, to to perform uh, to to perform uh, to do to to perform uh, to to perform uh, marvelously. Lower level of management. It's also known as supervisory operative uh, level of management. Consists of supervisors, foremen, foreman, section officers, superintendents. In other words, they are concerned with direction and controlling function of management. The activities include assigning of jobs and tasks to various workers, they guide and instruct workers for day-to-day -day activities. They are responsible for the quality as well as quantity of production. They are also entrusted with the responsibility of maintaining good relation in the organization. They communicate workers' problems, suggestions, and recommendatory appeal to the higher level and higher level goals and objectives to the workers. To whom much is expected, much is given. And to whom much is uh, given, much, much is expected. They have to solve the grievances of the workers. When two people are not in good time and it will hamper the productivity, then you settle them. But uh, according to School of uh, Conflict Management Thoughts, <coughs> not all conflicts are bad. Some conflicts are functional. Why so others, uh, others are dysfunctional? But a situation where two people will connive and make things uh, difficult for you, when they are fighting, then you should see that as a functional one. Then uh, you don't need to settle them. Use divide and rule, and uh, you get uh, results. They supervise and guide uh, the subordinate. You guide them. They are responsible for providing training to the workers. You train them on the job, allow them to go for short courses, and so many other things that will make them stand out. They arrange necessary materials, machines, tools, for getting things uh, done. Resources have to be in parity with the agenda at hand. They prepare periodical report about the performance of the workers. They ensure discipline in the enterprise. They motivate workers. You motivate your subordinate. Motivation is not all about money, but in Africa, we see that as uh, at least uh, adding, uh, giving us, uh, uh, we are happy when we are, uh, the something is added up to. But when you delegate your functions to subordinate to, the subordinate will be uh, happy doing your job because they are aspiring to be in your position by the time you will no longer be in the organization. They are the image builders of the enterprise because they are in direct contact with the workers. Then we'll have the essential tasks of a professional manager. The responsibilities of a manager arises out of the various social interactions in which the firm is engaged for the pursuit of each business. Here is a list of nine important responsibilities a professional manager has to carry out. The first one is providing a certain goal to the firm. Providing a certain goal to the firm. That is certain goal has to be smart or smarter in acronym. It has to be smart or smarter in acronym providing a certain goal to the firm. The task at hand must be specific. It must be measurable. It must be realistic. It must have a time bound, which can be evaluated and reviewed. Any task that is not smart or smarter, such task could be dead on arrival. It means shows that somebody somewhere has set you up to fail. Any delegated task or any task you must accomplish as a manager, must be specific. It must be specific. It must have a proper definition. What are you out? What is in it for the organization? What are you out to achieve? It must be measurable. There must be standard. And the actuals will be measured against the standard to see areas of uh, deviations and how deviations can be corrected. Is it, a realist is it realistic? If a tax is not realistic, 
It is not achievable. It is not realistic. Such task could be dead on arrival. It must also have a time bound. If you are telling me to do something, you should be able to tell me this is uh, the numbers of days I should spend. If you are sending me even to go out and perform tasks for the organization, and uh, you are not uh, adding uh, the time of accomplishment, then you have allowed, you have asked me to go on a holiday. Because when I get there, I finish my task and I will declare public holiday. <laughs> So I, I will decide, to, I will go and start doing my other things I can do for myself because there is no time bound. So task could be dead on arrival. It must have a time bound. In the public sector, you can go and uh, come, when, uh, but in the private sector, because uh, they are looking at uh, profit maximization, they may not want to even give you the numbers of uh, this thing that you have to pay. So you have to go be swift about what you are there and return back to the organization. That's what we call uh, project evaluation and review techniques. But the, the, the critical lines must be defined. If you're asking me to go to Sokoto, to go to, from Sokoto to Lagos, then uh, and you are, I, I'm, uh, I'm passing through uh, uh, this in uh, baby from Sokoto, I have to come through Abuja then to local Jakogi, then through Ondo, and start going to Lagos, instead of me to take uh, Mokwa, uh, Kotongora, Mokwa, Jeba, straight to uh, Obamashaw, and uh, start going to Lagos. Then uh, such uh, is dead on arrival. So it must have a time bound. Time of accomplishment must be stated. And it should also be evaluated. You understand if you have gotten it right, where you are facing challenges, you see what you can do and you review for future operations. I will dwell a little bit on time, though I know we don't have much time here, but uh, let us, uh, as, a, as, a professional as professional managers, we must also be an effective time managers. We have equal amount of time, which is 24 hours, yet many of us still complain of no time. We have equal amount of time, which is 24 hours. But many of us still complain of no time. Why is that so? You give somebody an assignment to do, you complain to you that ah, there's no, the time is not much. What are we not doing? As a professional manager, you must have, be an effective time manager. Manage your time judiciously so that you don't complain of no time. We have equal amount of time, which is the 24 hour. So don't complain of time. There are principles of managing our time effectively. Principle number one is a principle of a planning. Principle of planning. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. That is why we must plan accurately. And our plan must also be timely. Principle of planning. What uh, this principle is telling us, in managing our time effectively, we must have what we call to-do list. Schedule your list. That's what we call time mapping, the mapping of your time. If by Monday you are uh, going to the office from seven o'clock to eight o'clock, I know those of you in Lagos even wake up from four, 4 a.m. If not, uh, you may not be some of the go slow, or oh, hold up. So you get to your desk, maybe by eight o'clock. From eight o'clock, I could remember when I was working with the factory in Lagos, by six already we are there. By 6.15, if you are not there, then uh, you'll be taken as a latecomer. So 
principle of planning. You must have your to-do list, your schedule list. Eight o'clock, you're on your desk. Eight to nine o'clock, you clear the backlogs of last week. Nine to 11 o'clock, you go around the factory or in the ministries and parastatas, go around your department. 10 to maybe 11 to 12, you hold uh, your departmental uh, meeting, call the heads of uh, department to ask questions, what, uh, where they are facing challenges, see how we can make resources available to them to achieving a greater result. Then maybe by one, you have to, you need to rejuvenate. You go on break to come back stronger and better. Two to three, you must know what to do. Maybe meet with your customers. Let them tell you what they want, the specifications, and every other thing. Maybe three to four, you meet with your suppliers to know the quantities that will be supplied, what and what you are not getting right that is lacking in the organization. So if you can pull this together, it shows that you have understood the first principle of managing time effectively, which is the principle of planning. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you complain about no time. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. The second principle of managing your time effectively is of uh, organizing and prioritizing. Organizing and prioritizing. Already you have a to-do list. Not everything on your list is doable. Organize which is important and which is urgent. You must prioritize them. The important task could not be the most urgent task in the organization. The urgent task should come first before coming for the important ones. But there's something you must not do. Don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate to such a time the important task will become urgent and problematic for you to handle. Then the third principle is the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, known as uh, the Pareto principle. 20% of our outcome produces 80% results in the organization. It's not everybody that is working in the company or in the organization that is effective. You notice that 20% of your results out of your output produces 80% results. Just like we are 16 or 18 on this platform now. The original list was for us to have up to about 60. For using Pareto principle now, it is good you achieve 20% and that 20% should produce 80% results. Then the fourth principle is for you to avoid distractions. Avoid distractions. Even the Bible said it, that if your hands will cause you sorrow, cut it off. That friend that will distract you from not getting to the promised land, do away with that friend today. A friend does not mean anything good for you. People that will give you distractions, run away from them. For you not to complain about time, since we equally have uh, 24 hours per day, then avoid distractions. You cannot be in the office in the morning. You already have your schedule of uh, 8 to 4 or 8 to 5. In Japan, we have what we call the 888 formula. Eight hours for our paid employment, eight hours for our, uh, our private practice, and eight hours for family and uh, rest, resting. The eight hours for your paid employment, you could go there and do things judiciously. You cannot resume office in the morning. When you are expected to attack the issues at hand, you are on social media, chatting with friends and uh, relations. You, are, you, have created, you have distracted yourself already. It is not done anywhere. In Nigeria, in Africa, somebody will resume for a job of eight hours. You see him on his phone for over six hours, shouting and calling everyone. Why will such person not complain of time at the end of the day? 
you have distracted yourself. That is why you must gather the willpower and log off your social media account. Close your browser when you are supposed to do something meaningful. So as not to complain of time. Then another principle you should also look at in managing your time effectively is, uh, is to learn to say no. Learn to say no. When you have a task that is so urgent to handle and you are need, your superiors are bringing additional tasks that will distract you from uh, achieving results, you should learn to say no. But remember the first rule of 48 laws of power, never outshine your master. But you can, you can be political, at the same time diplomatic. They speak in the language that will be declared to them. Let them know that except if this particular task is no longer urgent, but important, then you can go ahead and uh, do the urgent one. Because the same person, if you don't say no, and you go ahead, you want to multitask, this same superior will complain to management about you. You will tell them how sluggish you are, and that will cost you your job. That is why you learn to say no by being political and diplomatic. And a situation where you don't say no, that will lead us to the next principle, which is principle of delegation. You delegate to your subordinates, those who can do the job. And by delegation, you free up a time for yourself. You explore into the unknown. Not uh, by delegating to people, you will now come back to do the job yourself. You must delegate to people who have the technical know-how, people who can deliver. Not people that uh, you'll be breathing down their neck every second. And uh, for you to manage your time effectively, you must always invoke the spirit of the four Ds. Four Ds. Invoke the spirit of the four Ds. The first D has to do with do, do, do it now, D-O. The first D has to do with do, do it now. The second D has to do with delete, delete. The third D has to do with delegate. And the fourth D, the fourth D has to do with uh, differ. Let me throw these questions to the house now. I want I need your participation. If a task is not urgent and it's not uh, important, which of the D are you invoking? Your task is not urgent and it is not important. What do we do from the four Ds I've given you? You can unmute and say something. If a task is not urgent and it is not important, which of the Ds are we invoking? Sorry, we didn't get the third D, sir. Okay, the first D is do it now. The third one, yes. The second D is to delete. The third D yes. is to differ. And the fourth D is to delegate. If okay, the task is so not important and it is not urgent, which of the D are we invoking? Differ. No. You delegate. No, sir. So it is not important and it is not urgent. We do. Is the first D, sir, No. If your tax is not important and it's not in your delete. you delete. You have you already you have a junk. Yes, thank you. Yes. It is a junk. Just like you open your mailbox in the morning, your Gmail or Yahoo mail or uh, uh, any mail, you now notice that you have over 500 messages. When you filter through, 
You now see the ones that are important. What do you think will happen to the, the remaining ones? You send them to the, you trash them. It's delete, sir. Because if you want to start reading them one by one, you may not even get to work on the, the important ones. <laughs> and you complain of no time at the end of the day. Then if a task is urgent, which of the D are we invoking? You do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Thank you. Infinite hot uh, 10. Hi. You do it now. If a task is urgent, don't play about it. Do it now. Yes. You know the second principle, organizing and prioritizing. We must understand those tasks that are urgent and those tasks that are important. Do the urgent ones now and uh, don't procrastinate. Come back and do the important ones. Because if you procrastinate, it will get to a time such an important task could become urgent and problematic for you to handle. So you have to do it now because it is urgent. Don't joke about it. If a task is urgent, an additional task has been added onto you, what, which of the D are we invoking? Delegate. You delegate. You delegate. Delegate to those of us yes. who can handle the task so that uh, you don't uh, yes. say no to your superiors because you have to say no and uh, by being political and diplomatic. But since you have yes. competent hands under you, then you delegate to your subordinate. And when you delegate to subordinate, you free up time. That will make you to explore into the unknown. If a task is not uh, important, it's not urgent, <laughs> but important, which of the D are we invoking? Which of the D are we invoking if a tax is not urgent or important? You differ. You differ. When you differ, there's a rule. Something you must not do. What is that? There's an exception to that rule. When you differ, there's something you must not do. What is that? You must not procrastinate. Don't procrastinate. Don't say, I will do it tomorrow. Tomorrow you say, I will do it next tomorrow. Next tomorrow I will say, I will do it uh, uh, this and that. It will get to a time, such task that you differ will become urgent and problematic for you to handle. You can see that uh, in managing your time effectively, you must understand the principles of uh, managing time effectively. You must uh, also understand uh, the other ones, the, 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 the this. You must invoke your this of uh, uh, managing time effectively. So the providing tax, a certain goal to the firm has been taken. Managing internal and external growth, factors pertaining to internal growth like means of technology being used, things that are controllable, you manage them. And the external ones has to be analyzed. You must understand the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Maintaining the organization's efficiency. Building assets for the organization, a good manager is always a valuable asset for the company because he understands the other assets of the company. A good manager is always on the lookout for people with potential and attract them to join the company. Being innovative also, you have to be innovative, be creative. Be creative. You have to be creative. Be a conceptual thinker. Bring in ideas that will stand the test of time. To innovate new ideas for the organization. To cultivate those ideas so that they match the new, trend, the new trends in what uh, you are expected to do. Always look out for competitors. Remember I told you earlier, your competitors are not ready to go to bed until you are already sleeping. Until you are already sleeping. Your competitors are not ready to go to bed until you are already sleeping. Always look out for your competitors. Do things that will give you comparative advantage over your competitors. Interaction with employees and customers. So whom much is expected, much is given. Always interact with your employees where they are not uh, having challenges, you see what you can do. 
and your customers, that is why most companies, they have the suggestion for us. If we perform better, then you tell others, and where we have failed you, you tell us. Deliver social responsibility, you give to the host community amenities that will stand the, the test of time, be a factor of change. Various duties of a professional manager, we have the supervisory role, the change management role, the decision making role, the leadership skill. As a leader, you must uh, make people do things for you willingly without uh, coercing them to do that. If people come together to do things for you without coercion, it shows how good you are as a leader. By giving them a good, uh, be a good uh, be, you must be a good listener and uh, always uh, be a good counselor. Functions of management, you can use the story of Moses and Jethro to analyze that. You have the materials, you can read that on your own. The place uh, about planning, controlling, controlling, organizing, staffing, directing, and uh, that is the uh, functions of management by O'Donnell. That should be taken care of. Nigerians, uh, Nigeria's economic, uh, dynamic economic environment, the environment is always hostile and clustered. It can be seen as a micro, which is controllable, which is seen, and a macro, which is unforeseen, which is uh, uncontrollable. So as a professional manager, you must the ones uh, you can control, you go ahead to take care of them. The uncontrollable ones, like the economic factor, the legal, political, and so many other factors, then should be analyzed. Next year, we are facing, a, it's going to be an election year. Then uh, if you, the type of business you do, you must analyze the political environment. Is it conducive for you? What are the uh, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and, and uh, threats? So as a professional manager, you must uh, understand uh, that. Nigerian economic environment is very dynamic. It is characterized by uncertainty. Policy somersault and inconsistencies. Because of the huge amount of uncertainty, planning becomes a Herculean task. The professional manager can therefore forecast factors of the economic environment because they are dynamic, taking into consideration the likely changes beforehand. However, if the changes are technical in nature, they can be very rapid. And if uh, they were not anticipated, there are possibilities that uh, anything can happen. SWOT analysis, that's the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. The macro environmental forces must be analyzed. Professional manager in a dynamic environment. Professional managers have a Hercules task in managing turbulent economies. The professional manager is expected to do the following, anticipating labor market and economic trends, coordinating workforce investment activities, with economic development and education strategies, bringing relevant parties together to address workforce and competitive challenges in a sustainable and collaborative way, promoting the participation of employers in the public workforce investment system, ensuring the effective provision of connecting, brokering, and coaching activities through intermediaries to help employers, to help employers meet hiring needs and competitiveness concerns, Developing linkages with economic development activities, including available state and uh, local economic retention and recruitment activities, devising and overseeing strategies for incumbent workers training, developing layoff aversion strategies, exchanging information about potential dislocations, exploring early interventions and pre feasibility studies for alternatives. Professional managers cannot control the weather. We cannot control the weather but can design and build a ship and equip it with a leadership team that can navigate the ocean under all weather conditions. Organizations that become more flexible and skillful at making critical decisions when the timing is right, have enormous opportunities to capture market and profit from companies that persist in managing as if the future economic environment is reasonably predictable. It is difficult to create a Nostradamus out of a professional manager, because whatever they do is within the confines of bounded rationality. 
No one can forecast with scientific accuracy what event tomorrow brings. What is critical, however, is that investors need assurance that they have made the right investment choices that does not remove the uncertainties in life's endeavors. But more information and education helps the lives, help the, help, helps the professional managers make better decisions. Even if the future is not always certain, intelligent planning does help. Uncertainty of life sometimes causes glitches in what could otherwise be a foolproof forecasting formula. Professional managers are no profit at all. If you want, uh, you must have the five piece at the back of your mind before embarking on any task that is specific, that is measurable, that is achievable, that is realistic, that is, uh, has a time bound, which can be evaluated and reviewed. If you want, if you want a year prosperity, grow grains. Ten years prosperity, grow trees. Hundred years prosperity, grow people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, much. you, Mr. Registra, for that wonderful presentation. I, I, I want to believe that the Honorable Registrar has done justice to the paper on, on today's theme of induction, the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. I hope you all can hear me loud and clear. <clears throat> Yes, yes, yes. All right. I, like I, I was saying, the registrar has done justice to the paper. If not for time constraint, he has the capacity of, on this same uh, topic, the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. But for the sake of time, I believe within the little time he had, he has uh, been able to touch all the important um, aspects of the paper. And um, in the course of his on the power of delegation, just like I told us at the beginning of the um, session, and he also told us about the power of um, thinking. As a manager, like he told us, you should have the ability to think outside the boss, if possible, chatter the boss. Because once you stop thinking as a professional manager, you particular position and within the within um, some few time you notice that that place will start um stinking it and before you knew it it will start sinking the same thing applies to us as a manager in our various organizations because like i told us earlier on the kind of today is full of um, volatility, uncertainty, ambiguity, and complexity. And it's a type of a business world whereby you don't even go to sleep, not until your competitors are already sleeping. He told us in the course of his presentation that in the, in the kind of we are living today, somebody might even be, be on a pay list of another um, company in your own organization just for them to be able to know what you are doing or what you are doing um, differently they can easily capitalize on in order to bring down your own um, organization i will not want to start another lecture um, the next few minutes now, let's have some contributions, observation, and a question with respect to what we have um, discussed so far before we now go to the main agenda. So if anybody has any questions, contributions, you kindly unmute your microphone, or better still, indicate by um, raising your hand and uh, we use the, um, the virtual hand on the, on the platform. Therefore, you can yes. um, and um, let's yes. hear your contributions or questions. Thank you. Yes, good uh, good morning. It's afternoon yeah. now. From, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Yes, Gula from Ugile, Delta State. First of all, I want to appreciate the registrar for elucid the lecture. 